Hello there, Bookshoot. My name is Daniel. Welcome back to my channel, Guilty Feet. Do, 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 and I've got no rhythm. Today I've got three things I want to talk to you about. The first is to address a question which uh, literary scholars have struggled with for decades, if not centuries. What even are the classics? Then we're going to look at the man who broke the classics. And finally, we're going to talk about an announcement which I heard about yesterday. Maybe uh, it came out the last few days from Penguin Random House about the latest edition to the line of classics. And uh, um, it may be shocking to some of you and an eye-opener for others, but worth sticking around if you haven't heard that news. Uh, so, first of all, what even are the classics? How can you tell if a book is one of the classics? What exactly do we mean by classics? This used to be very easy to answer. You used to be able to go into a bookshop, uh, um, go up to the proprietor of the bookshop or someone who had worked in the bookshop and say, where are your classics? And they would very, very helpfully point you towards the section of the bookstore with a big sign that said classics on it, and that's how you knew what the classics were. Anything in that section was one of the classics. Um, sometimes there were additional signposts and pointers to help you understand if a book was one of the classics or not. For example, a Penguin cleverly published a line of classics where they wrote the word classics in the title on the book itself. So Penguin classics, now we know that Jane Austen's Sense Sensibility is one of the classics. Totally different author, Charlotte Bronte. Again, Penguin classics, it's right up there. You can see it right at the front cover and that's how you know that these books are both classics. Um, other publishers did similar things, for example, you could find Oxford World Classics. Again, using that word classics to help you understand which books are classics. I can go to the back of my copy of Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility uh, and I've got a list of other Jane Austen books, all classics. Um, and then even some helpful hints about other books which were classics. Um, Selected Prose by Charles Lamb, published by Penguin Classics. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, published by Penguin. These are all classics and this is how we would understand what the classics were. They were books published as classics. Then, about 15 years ago or thereabouts, a man came along who broke the classics. You know, I would say maybe 20, 30 years before that, he broke popular music in a way that I don't think it ever fully recovered. Uh, um, so to come along to the world of classics and absolutely disrupt it and tear it apart uh, um, was not the first time this man was playing with fire. I am, of course, talking about Stephen Patrick Morrissey, who published his autobiography uh, um, in the Penguin Classics imprint. It was a condition of him publishing uh, with Penguin. He insisted that he would only publish his book, an autobiography, this is the first edition, in paperback, uh, and he insisted it was published as one of Penguin Classics. Penguin Classics, Penguin Classics. <coughs> Uh, what Morrissey is really doing here, and, and to be clear, I love Morrissey and I love this book, and, and I love Morrissey despite all the reasons that he has given us over the years to not love him anymore. I can't help myself. The heart wants what the heart wants. Uh, um, uh, uh, but what he's doing here is really sticking a pin in the pomposity of the notion of Penguin Classics and understanding exactly that the whole idea of classics, it's just a brand. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I've fallen for this brand. I have a whole bunch of pen classics. I like buying pen classics. I like reading classics. I like talking about pen classics I've, I've uh, uh, read. I like watching booktube videos of people going through their entire library of pen classics. Uh, but let's understand that the word classics is a brand, no more, no less. Uh, and for that reason, uh, I have no problem at all with Morrissey insisting that his book be published under the Penguin Classics imprint. I happen to think this is, was a funny excellent uh, bit of work. Uh, not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, sometimes um, uh, Morrissey is funny uh, and he knows he's being funny and sometimes he's funny when he doesn't necessarily know he's being funny and that's okay if you've been listening to his music or, or, or reading his lyrics for um, I guess at this point in my life, uh, um, 35, 40 years, uh, um, yeah, you take it as uh, in any way you like. I happen to to find it quite enjoyable. This was a hard read for somebody. It's a lot of pages, um, and, and some of it sort of fanciful, and some of it, as I say, 
pretty funny and entertaining. Um, and, uh, you know, he, when you have someone like Morrissey, he's an unreliable narrator of his own life. So I think that makes an autobiography by him uh, um, somewhat uh, entertaining to read. Anyway, uh, um, stick in a pin in the idea of the classics, because classics is just a brand, and why the heck not? And to, to, to come full circle and, and close that out, Penguin Random House uh, announced this week um, that they will be publishing three new books in their Penguin Classics um, series. Hold on one second. Three new books in the Penguin Classics series. Uh, um, there are some question marks remaining still about what the format of these books. They'll publish one, uh, two versions for each book in paperback and hardback, but the size of the editions, the actual physical size of the editions is, is not clear. I don't think it's going to be um, this size. This is the, the uh, uh, I don't know, what, this is a slightly bigger size they do these days. Uh, um, um, I think, uh, although I don't want to say for sure, that these editions will be slightly bigger than that because uh, um, these three volumes are going to be graphic novels. Uh, um, sorry, not graphic novels, I would say um, pay, trade paperback collections of comic books. Uh, I don't, n none of them are standalone novels, uh, um, uh, although one of them has a complete storyline. Um, so the first one is Spider-Man, um, and this is, uh, um, they're publishing uh, um, 12 issues from the first two years of Spider-Man's original run. In uh, Spider-Man started in Amazing Fantasy 15, and then Spider-Man number one, I think is around about 1963 ish. Uh, um, this is Stanley. Steve Ditko was the um, the first artist to draw um, Spider-Man. Uh, Stanley doing the um, scripting, and uh, um, so the Spider-Man edition in a scholarly Penguin Classics. Um, um, with full colour artwork, that much has been made clear, which is why I suspect that it, the pages may be larger, they may be larger format than this. Um, the paperback, I think, is retailing uh, um, something like $25, $30, so, uh, which again leads me to believe um, that will be a slightly larger format. So Spider-Man, uh, um, the second volume they're putting out is uh, Black Panther, um, starting with Black Panther's origin story. Black Panther first appeared in the pages of Fantastic Four, number 50 two-ish, I think, so you know, Fantastic Four, the first family of Marvel, and Spider-Man uh, um, coming another um, um, Stan Lee uh, um, um, creation, and then, uh, so uh, what is that, four or five years into the run of Fantastic Four, we're introduced to the Black Panther, I think it's around 1966. Um, uh, and that's often the way Marvel did. They would introduce characters, see if they resonated with the readers, and then uh, uh, the character would recur and eventually get spun off into into his own series. Uh, and so um, this Black Panther edition that, that uh, Penguin is putting out under Penguin Classics um, carries that origin story, Black Panther origin story, and then a run from uh, Black Panther's first solo comic book series, uh, a very famous run, which I, I've never read and I'm quite keen to pick up. Um, it was called uh, Panther's Rage, um, and I think one of the earliest... Um, um, Examples of a truly interconnected story that ran throughout, I think, eight or nine issues uh, of the of the comic. So in those days, this is a very traditional. It's something we know much more of today in comics. That we have twelve issue runs, and we have stories that run over uh, um, uh, many issues over a number of months. Um, but uh, in the early days of comics, certainly in the in the sixties, um, comics were very much standalone. There was no guarantee. You know, the, the, the idea of collecting uh, didn't really exist. Um, uh, people would buy their comics mostly from the newsstand, so it wasn't like you'd go to spec. There weren't any specialty com comic stores in the in the late sixties, uh, um, and so um, there was no guarantee that you'd be able to pick up a subsequent issue just because you read one. And so stories tended to be self-contained within a single comic book. Uh, and so Panther's Rage is, is famously one of the first uh, long-running, uh, stretched out over a number of issues story, and it's collected in this uh, Penguin edition. Uh, um, and then the third of the three volumes that uh, um, that I get. Yes, uh, Penguin and Marvel are putting out together to sort of try out this market and see if the world will be receptive to uh, um, seeing Marvel Comics as Penguin Classics is Captain America. Um, starting with, uh, um, I don't know if it's the first issue or something, you know, it's, there's a couple of, an issue from the 40s, so the original um, Jack Kirby artist, Joe Simon writer, um, and then I think the, uh, uh, I'm getting all this information from Amazon, and then I think the number of issues from the 1960s uh, when uh, Cap has been revived after being frozen in, uh, and, uh, and joins the Avengers in Avengers number four, I think. Um, and then some of his, his solo stuff where you're gonna get uh, a whole bunch of um, uh, um, Stan Lee stuff and, and uh, uh, John Romita Sr. and uh, Jim Steranko and uh, uh, and some, some juicy goodness there as well. Uh, um, I think of the, the three volumes, the one that I know least and would like to read, it may be Black Panther, uh, um, Spider-Man, 
probably I would rather have an edition that had the first 12 issues rather than um, cherry picking from the first two years as this one seems seems to, to do. But all of these strike me as sort of really interesting entry points for um, people who don't read classics or people who don't read comic books or people who are just snooty about genre and and arbitrary marketing labels that people like to put on books. I love this idea, if it wasn't clear, uh, um, the idea that Marvel and Penguin are publishing together uh, um, books as Penguin classics and they're including full colour artwork. Uh, um, I'm all for it. I wonder how many of you guys are, are, are open to this and would try these out for the first time, having never read a Spider-Man comic or a, um, a, some interest in Black Panther. I understand each of these editions, there's, there's an editor who's curating the entire series, and I, you know, if this is successful, we'll see a, a bunch of these coming after this. Um, but I think each individual volume has also got a, a scholarly introduction, and uh, uh, and the, I didn't know all the names. That there's three different people in it. There's there's an, an editor for the whole series, and then there's uh, someone who's written the introduction for each one. I didn't recognise the names, but they seem to be a sort of uh, um, uh, uh, nicely diverse um, set of, uh, uh, of scholarly introductions. With we can expect some notes. We can expect to, uh, um, uh, I imagine, uh, a quite. Um, serious and literary look at the impact of these works on uh, on modern reading and modern literature. So uh, um, I'm not sure I've necessarily answered the question as what even are the classics, but I love the idea that this, whatever the definition of classics are, it's expanding before our very eyes. Uh, all three of these books due out um, in uh, in uh, uh, um, next June, I'll put a link to the announcement from uh, uh, Penguin Random House and Marvel together, so you can have a look and uh, see for yourselves. Uh, and there's a choice of where to buy them. Obviously, not limited to uh, to any of the stores that I, that I may have mentioned. Uh, and that's all I want to say. Uh, um, take care. Read classics. Don't read classics. Do whatever you want. Label things whatever you want. Enjoy your reading. Uh, read more comic books. Definitely do that. Uh, um, take care. Bye.